Okay, then welcome everyone. Um, today we're going to, going to talk about um, optimized string processing in RISC V. Um, shortly, the agenda, what we're talking about, I have split the, the, ta uh, the talk in, into five parts. First of all, a quick overview uh, what we're going to talk about, what about strings functions, what is RISC V. I guess most of you will know uh, this already, but uh, anyway, we can uh, quickly go through that. Um, then we have a specific uh, optimization strategy for string functions in RISC-V, uh, which I want to present, what we are doing there. Um, also, how we implement this strategy in GCC and GLibc, and measuring the effect of the optimizations. And then, yeah, showing you the current status of, of upstreaming. Um, brief, a uh, few words about me. I'm Christoph Müller. I'm based here in Vienna, Austria. Um, I'm working at a company which is called Rule. And yeah, my background is uh, performance analysis, toolchain development, embedded Linux development, uh, static code analysis, everything in this area, code generation. And I'm the chair of the RISC V International Toolchain SIG and yeah, leading a, a small team of, of compiler developers in, in, at Rule. Yeah, so first of all, what is this talk about? Um, string functions. I assume every one of you know uh, whoever used string functions in their life, so classical C functions, yeah, a few hands go up, whoever wrote a, uh, a string function like a string compare or stringlen, uh, yeah, <laughs> also most of them, so you, most of you already know what we are going to talk about. Um, focus here is string compare and strillen. Uh, simple reason is uh, they are quite compact and I can pack them into this talk. Um, anyway. Just a quick, simple string compare that we are all on the same page. Um, so what we're doing here is we're comparing byte by byte if the uh, strings are, are um, equal or the characters of the string are equal. And then we're checking if, if uh, we have the null terminator. And if that's the case, we are stopping the loop and, and we are basically done. Uh, and we return uh, the, the, the corresponding return value. Um, this is not fast in general, but it's very fast if there is a, a, a difference in the first uh, character because then we immediately only have two loads. Uh, we compare that and uh, yeah, we are, we are done. Um, looking at string line, that's uh, more or less the same. Uh, it's just we have only one string, but again, we are checking for null termination and we just count uh, or, or increase the pointer. And yeah, uh, we, we remember what was the beginning and then we say where we have advanced our pointer, detect the beginning of the string, and yeah, that's the, 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 the length. Um, so a bit about risk five. Who of you know about risk five? Everyone, oh, yeah. <laughs> excellent. So um, I think we can then rather briefly go through that. Um, the thing I want to mention is uh, what we're talking about is um, uh, the bitmanip extension that uh, ZBB, which has the instruction orgb, and also XT had BB, which has a similar instruction. Um, XT had BB is a vendor extension, and yeah, as you probably all know, uh, vendor extensions are encouraged by uh, Risk Five International. So the standard has a, a dedicated reserved space for vendor uh, instructions, and yeah, that's that's one example of that. Um, so again, to these two instructions, what they do. Um, the first one is or combine on a byte level. Um, so if there is any bit set on in each byte then the whole uh, byte will become uh, FF. If it's a zero byte, then it will remain a zero byte. Um, it's like all bits of the, this byte will be ORed together. Um, that's basically it. Um, the other one is test not byte zero. That's from the XT hat BB extension that does almost the same, but the uh, uh, result will be inverted. So um, in case of a null byte, you have uh, an FF in the resulting byte, and in case of any other uh, byte in the input, um, you will have a zero, zero. And yeah, um, as, as, as I've mentioned, uh, we have this equivalence that um, uh, we can just invert uh, the outcome of one of them to become the, the semantics of the other one. Okay, so what about the strategy for string functions? Um, a string function, as I showed before, the simple one um, which operates on byte level, um, needs to load the bytes in a loop 
and uh, do whatever checks are necessary, increase the pointer, um, and then have a conditional branch, um, which, will, which will either loop back or loop to an exit node, which does the calculation or, or whatever. Um, so there's nothing wrong here, um, but it's just a little bit slow if the string is quite long. And um, the reason for that is that we are doing uh, the calculation on a byte per byte level. Yeah. We have L3 and L4. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Good question. Um, that's actually I, I renamed the labels, ah, you but I did not rename them all. <laughs> but let's see if we can if we can figure out. So L3. Um, so we are loading a byte. We are loading the other byte, and we are branching okay. if not equal. Um, and uh, have you the, the comment exit, if not equal? So that label here is actually L exit. Okay. Um, then we're incrementing the two pointers, and uh, here we have this branch not equal um, with zero, so we don't have a zero termination bit, a byte, and uh, we're jumping to the beginning. That's L start. Um, yeah, I did not run that code, <laughs> but <laughs> I compiled it, I brushed it up a little bit to make it more readable, but yeah. I did not run it. Yeah, as always. Um, okay, so the, the issue again is that we are working on byte by byte level, which is not very efficient and doesn't scale very well. Um, what would be more efficient is if we, if we could operate on more bits at once. Um, so if we would, for example, read one, by, one word from a string, um, or in case of string compare, we read both words and we're comparing them, that's quite trivial. I mean, we can just compare the content of a register, right? Um, but the question is, how can we find out if there is a, a zero byte or not? Um, and usually when we are operating on multiple data in a single instruction, and that's what we're going to do or what we want to achieve, uh, this is called SIMD. And uh, SIMD extensions usually come with SIMD registers, so like vector registers, as, uh, AVX uh, registers, and so on. And they're usually wider and they are dedicated registers. Um, so you usually have a big unit um, behind that in the, in the CPU, and uh, that's one way you can do it, of course. But if you don't want, for whatever reason, because, for example, you don't have a vector unit, then uh, you're out of luck here. And there is something, uh, some technique which is called um, SIMD within a register, SWAR, and this uh, describes the whole concept of SIMD on a general purpose register. So this normal register, integer registers that you have in your CPU. And um, there, are, of course, uh, you can use the normal instructions if they are sufficient, but there are also cases where you need uh, specific instructions. And um, the, at, at risk 5 we are currently working on uh, the P extension, the PECT SIMD extension, which is targeting uh, instructions which exactly fit into this world. Um, yeah. The first occurrence which I could find um, of, of SWAR um, algorithms was done by Leslie Lampert in the paper Multiple Byte Processing with Full Words Instructions. And um, yeah, this is a paper from 1975, nothing new here. Um, and yeah, that's, that's the algorithm from the paper where Lampert is comparing two strings. Um, if they are equal, he prints uh, a blank. That's that uh, triangle. Where do we have it here? And if it's uh, if there's a difference, he prints the hash. Um, but don't worry, we don't go through this assembly. I know you all like assembly, but this assembly is probably a little bit uh, hard to read, <laughs> unless you're used to that. Um, but let's try to see what a derived version of this idea uh, in Chilipsi does. And to look into what glibc does, we simply have to dig in. The, the source code is linked here. And the relevant function, what we are talking about, and what we mentioned before, um, to find the zero byte in our register um, is this function. It's this trivial. Um, again, this will not compile because of this underscore, um, but the rest will compile. That I tried. Um, and what's not going on? Ah, it's back. Um, so the thing is, let's try to understand what's going on here. Or not.
plugging or plugging in. Okay, so um, the first thing that we are doing here in that uh, parenthesis is uh, we are ending the, the X, that's the incoming value, with M, which is the mask, which is here. So we have 7F, 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 and so on. So what we are doing actually here is um, we are clearing the topmost bit. That's all that we're doing. Um, the reason for that is because we're doing then an addition and we want to avoid an, an overflow or an overflow from one byte to the next or a carry in this case. Um, so uh, yeah, we're clearing the bit. We are adding the mask itself. So we're adding 7F. And what we're getting here is, uh, I've listed here some examples. So in case of 00, zero if we have a null byte, um, we're masking it uh, with 0x7F. We're adding 0x7f um, and we get uh, 0x7f. Um, for all other values, we can see that uh, the topmost bit will be set, except for 0 uh, 0x80, uh, where we will get the same result as uh, before. But we already see that there is some pattern, right? Um, for most cases, um, this will lead to a set upper bit. In, in each byte, which is not an null byte, except for one small uh, exception, which we need to treat special. And this special treatment is two additional ORs. The first thing what we do is uh, we are ORing with the original value. So in case of 7F, if we are ORing with 0x80, um, the result will be uh, FF. Um, in case of Zero, 0, the result would be um, this adopter doesn't like the notebook. Let's see again. It's not the power save feature, right? <laughs> you mean that's the reason why it uh, holds so long? Oh, it is. <laughs> Therefore, I'm so amazed by the battery power <laughs> of this device. Um, okay, so uh, coming back to that, um, we said that uh, we're ORing with the original value and the mask. So in case of 0x00, uh, zero, 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 um, we get, um, because we, have, we are, um, where are we now? Yeah, what I didn't mention now uh, is what I didn't mention so far is that we uh, invert the result. So um, for 0x00, zero zero zero, we get 0x7f. Um, so uh, we have this result here before. We um, OR it with the original value, which is a zero, 00. So nothing changes. We OR it again with the mask, 0f. So 0f stays, uh, is, is the result. If we invert it, then uh, we get 0x80. In case of, of 80, um, we would immediately set with ORing with X, um, we would set all, bit, all, all bits. So we have FF. Um, FF, then we are ORing again with the original value. Um, so we would end up with 0xFF still. And if we're inverting, we get 0. So we have a clear distinction between um, is there a 0 byte, yes or no? Because if we look at the result, um, in case there is no zero byte, the resulting word will be all zeros. And that's the trick. The position of the underscore is, is, is strange. Is, is, it, is, it, is it? Yeah. Oh, maybe. No, I mean... It's yeah, it's, it's, it's wrong. It's off by one. Uh, okay. <laughs> yeah. And... Uh, as, as mentioned, the whole algorithm can be found uh, in, in glibc. That's, that's there. And yeah, that's how this functionality is implemented in glibc. Um, but let's come back to, to Strillen, for example, and how we're going to use that. Um, so that's the function that we had before. If we want to use this uh, new find zero, um, we simply add it, uh, we, we read the words, we try to find zero. In case we found zero, we of course need to go out. We need to find, of course, the first occurrence. 
of the zero byte. And yeah, then we are going to calculate the result. In case um, we don't have a zero, we simply uh, increase the pointer and search the next word. But there's one thing here, uh, why this is not the right solution yet. Um, and the, the reason is point alignment. <coughs> So first of all, uh, the issue with pointer alignment is if you're reading a misaligned pointer, so a pointer which is not uh, aligned to the size of your excess, um, you might get a penalty in some microarchitectures. And that's quite common, actually, um, that the penalty will be like you're doing two loads. There is another problem that uh, at the end of the page you can get... That's the next slide. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, so uh, some architectures even don't support uh, uh, misaligned accesses at all. So either this will lead to data board, your program will crash, or the kernel or whatever will handle it gracefully and will do the trap and emulate. But trap and emulate is so costly that whatever you're doing here with optimization would be, would be pointless. Um, so we need to take care that the machine is fast enough if we're doing unaligned access. Um, but yeah, as the colleague already mentioned, uh, there's a second problem, which is even more painful, and that's if we are uh, accessing across page boundaries. So virtual memory is organized in, in pages, typically 4K, and if we are reading um, a few bytes before the end of the page and the load of the whole register, uh, or the size of the register would overlap to the next page, we might end up reading a, from a page which is not mapped. Uh, of course, you get a trap, um, and that's what you don't want, because if you compare it with the simple string length, which is working byte by byte, and you still have the null terminator in there, you don't, you don't see the trap. So there's a different in the difference in the behavior, and uh, you don't want to, to have this difference in the behavior. So, and there is actually almost nothing you can do against that. Um, so what we are usually doing is we don't do any underlined excesses, if we cannot guarantee that we are uh, not crossing a, a page boundary. Uh, for string length and string compare, no, for string length, I think glibc does not do that. For string compare, if you have two strings and they are misaligned, you might read ahead in one string, and, uh, therefore, and, and, and in this case, you know where is the, 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 the page boundary, and then you can somehow, because you're behind a little bit, you can always uh, read the string. In this case, it's, 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 it's correct, um, because um, if one page does not fault, you can always read up on the other side unaligned. Um, but uh, in general, the general algorithm, the generic algorithm does not do that in, in glibc, and yeah, uh, there is, there's good reasons to not do that. So, um, but what glibc does uh, in the generic implementation, they have a special treatment. Um, they are uh, actually um, masking down the pointer to the next uh, point of alignment, reading the whole uh, register, masking it, doing the, the uh, special treatment of the uh, pre-peeled uh, loop. And uh, yeah, then the rest of the loop is actually the same. Once we are aligned, we can simply use whatever we had before. And that's actually the implementation uh, from glibc, the generic one. You, I've linked it here. Um, and yeah, it's, it's actually quite decent um, and nice. Uh, the only thing here is, um, has zero uh, might be something that we can still tweak. So again, uh, the find zero function, uh, we end up and this time I really compiled it, uh, it ends up with 10 instructions on GCC, on a, on a, a GCC from today, um, by just doing that. And uh, if we remember before, the two functions that we had, uh, they are actually doing more or less the same that we, that we just have seen. So in case of 0, 0, org B uh, remains 0. Uh, in all other cases, we get an FF. So at least as the uppermost bit will be set, if we invert it and we're actually getting then the test uh, non-byte zero, we're getting something which is actually immediately usable in our case. So, well, let's do that. And the resulting functions look like this. So we have um, 
optimized from 10 instructions down to two or three in this case. And well, that's our strategy. And that's what we're going to do in GCC and GLibc. Okay. Um, so the question is, of course, how can we integrate this idea into GCC? What needs to be done to do that? Um, the first thing that we uh, are usually doing in GCC is we are only optimizing um, code in case we have alignment. Um, but maybe let, let me let me go one step back. Um, so GCC has a feature to detect um, string function calls and um, can treat them in a special way. So backends can generate code uh, in whatever fashion they want, what is, is usable for them, um, instead of calls to glibc or to the C library. And um, we can use this, this mechanism, of course, to emit uh, a simple loop, which is working on word level, and um, does this uh, in, a, in a peeled fashion, so we don't need uh, too many branches back. Um, all the time, so we can have one comparison after the other, uh, back to back, and uh, like after the, 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 the eighth comparison, we do the, 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 the final check, and if it's still not, uh, if the strings are still not equal, we can have a fallback, which then calls uh, glibc. Um, the benefit of that would be um, that if you have strings like everything is below 64 bytes, then you never need to have the call overhead uh, into, into the glibc. Um, yeah, that's what we uh, have implemented in GCC. And um, yeah, what you need to do is uh, you need to call m inline strlearn, m inline strcompare, m inline strncompare. And you even have a tweak parameter that allows you to decide how many um, unpeeled loop iterations you want to, to uh, emit. Yeah, um, when we look at glibc, um, so glibc has this generic uh, implementation, which I showed you before, which is uh, quite nice, but of course it's generic and by definition it cannot handle um, uh, risk five instructions, so we cannot uh, 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 change it and do some inline assembly or whatever. Uh, so we need something uh, more, uh, better. And in glibc we have two scenarios. The first one is that we want to do this at compile time. So we build a glibc which is specific for our target. And in this case we would enable all extensions that we need, for example uh, uh, zbb. And in this case, uh, we can handle the whole thing um, via, via test macros, feature test macros. So um, if def risk v zbb, uh, in this case, we can simply replace that. This is all uh, very structured and layered, uh, implemented in, in uh, glibc. We can replace the header files um, and provide um, the uh, test function or the, the find zero function in the risk v backend and have an appropriate uh, function. And the same would work for, for the XT head BB um, extension. So uh, that's the case for static compilation or uh, uh, compile time optimization. Um, when we have a generic Linux distro like Ubuntu, that usually targets um, uh, something that is a little bit more uh, or has a lower bar. Uh, so RV64 might be a reasonable target at the moment and uh, Ubuntu indeed targets that and all the other dist RISC-V distros as well. Um, and in this case, uh, we need some clever mechanism which would replace the implementation at runtime. Uh, RISC-V has the ifunc uh, framework that does that. Um, and how it works is, um, well, you have a dynamic loading and you have a procedure linkage table and uh, this is more or less a, 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 a table of pointers which are pointing to a specific uh, function and uh, you have um, at runtime you are resolving, you have a resolver function which checks what um, in, uh, extensions are available on the machine you're running on. For example, zbb is here, and in this case, you would simply uh, set the uh, function for string length or string compare to your optimized routine. And yeah, that, that works quite nice. 
doesn't have, have uh, overhead and um, the mechanism that we are using to get the uh, available extension is the HW probe syscall, which is uh, part of the Linux kernel since, since I, I would say, about a year or so. Yeah, and that's that's uh, what we're doing on the Chilipc side. And yeah, well, let's have a look at what it uh, what, what what we what we see from what what effect we see from the optimizations. Um, so I have three uh, test scenarios here. Uh, the first one is a self-written uh, self-written benchmarks. Um, the second one is the dry storm benchmark, and the third one is spec CPU 2017. Um, I think most of you know that more or less about what we are talking about here, so I will not go too much into details here. Um, the test systems are actually real hardware that you can buy. Um, on the left side we have uh, the Star 5 Vision 5.2, uh, which is uh, yeah, available since one or two years. Uh, the other one is the Scaleway AM RV1, uh, which has a T-head core. Um, the other one has a Sci-5 core. So the left one has uh, the ZBB. Uh, extension and the right one has the XT head BB extension. Um, yeah, well, with that said, let's look at, at uh, the micro benchmark. <coughs> so, um, when we are looking at string functions, we always need to look um, at the length of the string, and uh, because that, that determines how many loop iterations we are doing. Uh, so, um, different strategies might have different results, and in, indeed, that's the case here. Um, and yeah, we have for GCC, we have two uh, scenarios. The one is that GCC does not detect um, the, the alignment of the string, so it will not uh, trigger the optimization. And the other one is that GCC triggers the optimization. And uh, so we have in total four cases. Um, the GCC and GLibc do not optimize. Um, one of each does optimize, and then we have the case that both are optimizing. Um, the results are here. Um, I think the highlight is um, if both optimizations are enabled, the highlight is we have 147% speed up in case of a string length of 11. What we're measuring here is uh, gigabit per second, so how many bytes of the strings are processed per second. And um, yeah, an interesting fact is also that we're seeing here uh, degeneration, um, which is uh, likely caused by simply saturating the memory subsystem of the CPU so, so much that it cannot uh, provide enough data to, to properly process. Um, yeah, so I think it's, it's quite a, a, a nice speed up overall, especially in the, in the lower areas, um, and we always beat the baseline, except for these cases here in the end. But I need to mention that the default for optimization ends actually here. So uh, 64 bytes is the maximum that we are usually um, expanding to with GCC. Um, so everything below is just for the purpose of, of, of the measurement. Um, that's uh, the graphical representation. And we, we can see that uh, yeah, the, the optimized GLibc um, is really giving us a nice speed up. Yeah, if we, um, I, I, I need to mention here that uh, in this case, both strings are aligned. Um, we also have this option that uh, both strings are aligned. We have the option that the first string is aligned, the second string is aligned. They are both misaligned, but the same way. And we have the option that, um, they are totally misaligned and we cannot do much about that. Um, here is the example for in, in case the first string is aligned, uh, even here we are uh, uh, faster in, in almost all cases. Okay. Um, that's the same for the EAM uh, RV1, so the Scaleway uh, uh, XD head machine. Um, here we have a, a similar effect here. Uh, with saturating the, the memory subsystem, and we have a quite nice performance speed up of, of 290%. The graph looks a little bit similar. Um, here we can see that the GCC optimization is much more powerful than it was before. 
until a certain point. Uh, but again, uh, we stop at 64 by default. Everything beyond that is, of course, you, you need to tweak it if you if you want to benefit more from that. Yeah, here again we have uh, the case where only the first string is aligned. Okay. Um, so let's, let's skip that uh, to not uh, spend too much time. Let's jump into dry stone. So in dry stone, dry stone is, is a, a quite old uh, benchmark, which also includes uh, string uh, comparison. And um, yeah, GCC optimizations do not work here. That's simple because uh, the way how GCC is, is, is currently optimizing does not uh, um, feature um, alignment propagation, so we cannot um, we cannot call the string compare function or em, uh, emit the string compare sequence by GCC because we don't have the information uh, where we need it, where the call site is. Um, yeah, the rest is more or less like you would expect, I would say. Um, and the result is, uh, I've normalized it here uh, because we don't want to compare the, the performance of the machines. What we want to compare is we want to see the speed up of both machines. And yeah, one time we have 3% speed up, the other one we have 5% speed up. Yeah, and when it comes to spec CPU 2017, um, I made a run on, on Intrade uh, with a single copy. Uh, base runs, not peak runs, uh, no, no PGO or feedback-driven optimization, and yeah, that's the that's the results. Um, <laughs> as you can see, there is some little bit uh, on and off everywhere, but overall, I would say not really an effect. Also, the total score does not move by a percent at all. Um, Likely, what we are measuring here is uh, noise. There might be some trend, but uh, yeah, that's neglectable, most likely. Uh, yeah, that graph also shows that there is a little bit going on, but not much. And nothing that we should uh, really talk about. Um, same for the T-head machine. So. Uh, the question is, of course, why is this happening? Uh, there are two explanations. One is we are uh, the, the spec benchmarks are not heavily utilizing the uh, glibc functions for the simple reason is that they, they want to benchmark the application and not the libraries. Um, that's one of the, the, the things they are checking before releasing a, a, a new benchmark release. And the other one is uh, if you're saturating the, the memory subsystem, too much, then there's little you can gain from optimizing uh, CPU cycles. So if the CPU needs to wait, uh, it's, it can either wait or uh, perform useless instructions, you, you don't gain anything. Okay, coming to the current status of the, of the whole optimization uh, thing. Um, so Linux kernel optimizations, um, in the Linux kernel we are doing the same optimizations. Uh, the person who wrote that is actually in the room, Heiko. And uh, yeah, that's uh, available since early 2023. Um, in GCC we have the functionality upstream since uh, somewhere, I would say, autumn 2023. Um, and it is part of GCC 14. Um, GLibc optimizations are partially uh, upstream. There were, there were a lot of dependencies that had to be fulfilled and implemented uh, in order to get this uh, properly integrated in GLibc. Uh, most of that is done. Uh, well, actually, the dependencies are all in. Uh, the only thing that's missing is the actual patch that uh, includes the ifunks, the ifunk functions that have the optimized code. And yeah. Uh, uh, we, we expect that this will, will land quite soon, and yeah, the next thing to target is, is uh, optimizing the, the string functions and the memory functions with vector extensions. Yeah, uh, as I mentioned before, it's not me who is uh, alone working on that. There are a couple of people uh, working on several parts of, of the whole uh, of the whole optimization. Um, my, my part is more on GCC and uh, GLibc side, but there's of course a lot of, of, of kernels on the kernel side as well, which is going on and yeah. So 
summary, uh, we are using ZPP org B or in T uh, for XT head BB test non byte zero instructions to optimize string functions. Um, optimizations can be done in GCC and GLibc. Uh, we have some nice speed ups in the micro benchmarks. Drystone also benefits. Uh, Spec CPU does not benefit for two reasons. And yeah, almost everything is upstream. And with that said, thank you very much for listening. And are there any questions? I have two questions. Uh, first one, you said that uh, iFunk does not incur any overhead. So I understand that patching the pointer happens also all, only at the first invocation, but then afterwards you have an extra indirection before, right? I have, I have what? The iFunk. Yeah. So you, so you have you the PLT where, add, you have the, add, the, uh, where you can do the resolution, uh, resolution of your uh, symbol yeah. to the actual function. Yeah. So you, you at the first call, uh, you check the features available and then you substitute the pointer with the, right, uh, with the right implementation. But on all subsequent calls, you have an extra indirection. Instead of jumping directly to the function, you have to fetch the table and then jump to the function. Well, but Isn't usually when you, when you link and when you don't static link, you cannot uh, determine the, the address of the string function in advance. So you always have the PLT okay. that you need to go through. Okay, so you mean you, it's, it's the same overhead you have, you have with dynamic way. linking, the same thing. But if you would do static linking, then of course you, you would uh, have this, you, you can get rid of this one indirection, yes. Okay, and the other question is, I, I guess you have made tests also on some real applications, I don't know, application doing a lot of string manipulation, I don't know. Uh, or <laughs> well, just, or just, one, or yes. just the micro benchmark. Or uh, the, the thing is, it's 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 very varying. Uh, sometimes you have some uh, applications which need string processing, but nowadays a lot of things are done with UTF-8, and then uh, the string comparisons uh, are are not the, the the thing that you are using. And yeah, in, in this case, it, it everything works a little bit different. Okay. Okay. Thank you. So we had uh, actually in OpenSSL we had a, an interesting like problem because we started using string case compare uh, for some some identifiers mm -hmm. and it was like uh, causing problems and we thought that we will like yeah try to somehow optimize it and and so on and in the end it was like no, it was better to <laughs> just do the simple thing because uh, it, it did not really like. Yeah, well, well, well the, in, at least in GLibc, they're trying to use the optimized routines whenever they can. But yeah, in case of string case compare, the code is very long and I don't see how to get this very performant. It, it's like string compare is also much slower than normal string compare. Um, but of course, for security reasons, often you want to use it, you want to yeah. bound it. Um, yeah, but <laughs> I, I can understand why people are tempted to not do it. But of course, I would not. I would always do it. <laughs> or, or using memcompare that would be the, the the best thing to do if you if you have a fixed size of your buffers. Any other questions? Okay, then thank you very much.